um, I uh, had technological issues, no matter how you try. But anyway, I'm here, thank God, for this wonderful occasion. So to introduce our Deputy Assistant Secretary for the Western Bureau Affairs is Cherie Murray from the Institute of Caribbean Studies, my co-host for today's program. So Cherie? Yes, thank you so very much. And Dr. Nelson, this is an overwhelming uh, time. And so we'll certainly give you the opportunity to gather yourself and we look forward to your beautiful poem. As we continue to pay tribute to the strong friendship between the United States and the countries of the Caribbean region, the opening plenary continues with a keynote address from the United States Department of State, Ms. Excuse me, Deputy Assistant Secretary for the Bureau of Western Hemisphere Affairs, Ms. Cynthia Cindy Kirsch. Ms. Kirsch is a Senior Foreign Service Officer and serves as the Deputy Assistant Secretary for Canada, Haiti, and the Caribbean in the Bureau of Western Hemisphere Affairs. She previously served as the director and the deputy director in WHA's Office of Canadian Affairs from 2013 to 2016. Ms. Kirsch was the cultural affairs officer in Bogota, Colombia, managing a multi-million dollar grant portfolio in support of cultural and educational initiatives. From 2011 to 2013, she also served as a deputy management counselor in Bogota, responsible for providing services to 42 agencies and more than 3,400 customers, and was the coordinator for the Summit of the Americas. In Washington, she served twice in the Bureau of Counterterrorism, in the WHA office and the executive director, of the executive director, excuse me, on the Secretariat staff and in the Operations Center and in the Near East Bureau. Her overseas assignments include the U.S. Embassy in Rabat, the U.S. Interest in Section, the U.S. Interest Section in Tripoli, the U.S. Embassy in Cairo, and the U.S. Consulate in Marseille. She has been the recipient of several superior and mer mer meritorious honor awards and speaks Arabic, French, and Spanish. Ms. Kirst earned a BA in International Relations from Carleton College and a Master's in Public Policy from the Kennedy School of Government at Harvard University. Ms. Kirst, thank you so very much for joining us today, and I now turn it over to you. Well, thank you so much, Shuri, and good morning to everyone. Uh, Dr. Nelson, it is an overwhelming time and I understand um, your emotion. Uh, it's very much an honor for me to be speaking on behalf of the United States to celebrate the beginning of Caribbean American Heritage Month. First of all, I would like to thank you, Dr. Nelson, um, as the founder and president of the Institute of Caribbean Studies for inviting me to address all of you here today, as well as all of the stakeholders who have made this event possible. Long before I was fortunate enough to add the Caribbean to my responsibilities, Dr. Nelson, through her tireless advocacy, has labored for support for the interests of the Caribbean. I find it fitting as we celebrate the launch of Caribbean American Heritage Month this June to recognize her prominent role in advancing our relations and to thank her for embodying our strong, enthusiastic, and vibrant relationship across the Caribbean Sea. And I too very much look forward to hearing uh, the poem. Of course, it wouldn't be appropriate for us not to acknowledge that this has been a week of turbulence in the United States. Um, today marks a week since the abhorrent death of an African American man, George Floyd, at the hands of a police officer in Minneapolis, a, a city that I know very well, and protests throughout the country. First, I want to offer my condolences to the Floyd family and to everyone who is grieving and feeling trauma, anger, and anguish. There are investigations underway, both at the state and federal level, looking at the police officer's actions. We believe strongly that no one is above the law. But more broadly, protesters expressing their anger re regarding police brutality and racism are a reminder that American society is not perfect that our democracy needs constant dialogue, 
as we seek to strengthen our country and our institutions. That struggle continues. And it is important to reflect on that as we commence the month of Caribbean American heritage, given the close ties between our regions. Since I came on board as Deputy Assistant Secretary of State covering Caribbean affairs, I've seen firsthand how the region's rich culture is interwoven with that of the United States. While in Nevis, I visited the birthplace of a statesman and how the region's now rich culture is interwoven in U.S. and Caribbean American heritage, given the close ties between our regions. So, Alexander Hamilton, our first Treasury Secretary. Hamilton House is now a museum, a testament to a man who worked a lot harder to bridge his origins in the Caribbean to make a lasting impact on what is now the United States of America. In Bridgetown, in the as the to make a lasting impact, I had the opportunity to visit the house where George Washington spent his first and only visit outside of this country before becoming its first president. I also appreciate the everyday treasures of the Caribbean. One of my lasting memories of St. Vincent was a delicious fish dinner, fresh caught and wonderfully prepared, a part of Caribbean culture that I definitely appreciate. As each of you join us virtually from different parts of the United States, the Caribbean region and other locations throughout the world, I hope that you and your loved ones are safe and healthy during these trying times. Despite the quarantines, stress-inducing news cycle, and magnified challenges we are all going through, today we find ourselves commemorating an important and special event that deserves celebration. While we might be physically distant during this pandemic, the cultural and social ties that bind us remain strong. Let us celebrate Caribbean American Heritage Month by focusing not on the distance between us right now, but rather on the creation of a brighter future that is possible when we can work together. This is exactly what this year's SMART Caribbean celebration envisions. And speaking to you as a representative of my government, I'm happy to note that while government to government cooperation is important, at the end of the day, many of these achievements are made possible through the hard work, determination, and fortitude of the amazing men and women that com comprise the fabric of our societies. People to people engagement at its finest. The Caribbean American diaspora is a vital force to contributing to this endeavor. But before we look to tomorrow, it's important to recognize the past. The origins of our, our relationship stretch back to the very foundation of the United States. From the imprint Barbados left on an impressionable 19-year-old George Washington, to the active engagement of 500 Haitians taking up arms in the United States Revolutionary War, our history is a rich tapestry so interwoven it would be impossible to separate. We are honored by the significant contributions Caribbean Americans and Americans of Caribbean descent have made to enrich our society, shape our culture, and leave an indelible imprint on American history. These contribution and contributors come in all different shapes and sizes, literally. From the most decorated American gymnast, four foot eight Simone Biles, originally of Belizean descent, to seven foot two Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, the National Basketball Association's all-time point leader, from stars like Sidney Poitier and musicians like Rihanna, to my old boss, General Colin Powell, the list goes on and on, and the tapestry continues to be woven. For our part, the United States government is continuing to weave that tapestry, investing and partnering with leaders of tomorrow in the Caribbean region, who are organizing volunteer programs, heading up response efforts when natural disasters strike, and leading the charge in investing in and forming business partnerships in the region. One of our State Department exchange programs is the Young Leaders of America's Initiative Professional Fellowship, or as we call it, YLI. Through YLI, the department selects a group of promising young business and social entrepreneurs from Latin America and the Caribbean each year to embed for a month at businesses across the United States, where they make contacts, forge commercial ties, learn practical skills, share best practices, and augment their operations plans. Our YLI fellows then return home to, to apply what they've learned in their endeavors. I can tell you firsthand that these are remarkable young people who are doing great things for their countries and for the US-Caribbean relationship. 
For example, 2017 YLI fellow Michelle Samuel of St. Lucia was inspired by her participation in the program to launch a new organization in her community that assists other entrepreneurs, students, women, and unemployed people to start their own businesses and create employment and opportunities. She is now working to implement a pilot Academy for Women Entrepreneurs in St. Lucia, which is an online program to impart business and entrepreneurship training. And 2018 YLI Fellow Rory Craig Walker of Jamaica used contacts and skills learned during his time in Detroit to open a fulfillment center for his business in the United States. He sells and ships care packages of Jamaican products to expats and Americans alike. His business is now more tightly connected, generating value and employment in both Jamaica and the United States. And you can get a touch of home in the United States from Jamaica. Through these programs, the United States and the Caribbean are more tightly connected as well. The U.S.-Caribbean relationships are those of close friends and given our many diaspora ties, also family. Our friendships are deep and enduring and at the heart of this friendship are shared values. While geography makes us neighbors, our shared values make us partners. We share a bond based on a belief in democracy, rule of law, and the responsibility of government institutions to serve the people. This region is special because of its embrace of democracy with our nations boasting democratic systems of governance for decades. This year, all over the Caribbean and the United States, voters will exercise the belief that they should choose their own leaders. Our adherence to democratic values and human rights distinguishes us from many regions around the world. Along with our values, we share the same threats as well. From natural disasters like hurricanes and pandemics to man-made perils like illicit trafficking, terrorism, and attacks on our de democratic beliefs, we face these challenges together. And together, we pool our experiences, our knowledge, and our resources to make ourselves safer against the menaces of violence and more resilient against the hazards of mother nature, especially to note on today, June 1st, the first day of hurricane season. The United States has shaped our engagement in the Caribbean to adhere to these shared beliefs and confront these threats while focusing on areas of common interest that bind us. The centerpiece of this engagement is our US Caribbean 2020 strategy our roadmap to deepening American engagement in the key strategic areas of security, prosperity, disaster resilience, energy, health, education, and diplomacy. Since launching this strategy in 2017, together we have accomplished some amazing achievements, including launching our first ever US-Caribbean resilience partnership with 18 Caribbean countries to build regional capacity is including our resilience, including the COVID-19 pandemic. To date, the U.S. government has sent millions into that funding and continues to work on getting equipment such as ventilators to help our Caribbean neighbors respond to this current pandemic. Providing free medical care for nearly 70,000 patients through the U.S. Navy hospital ship USNS Comfort's five-month deployment in Latin America and the Caribbean this past summer, Re and reinforcing our resolve to main secure maintain security around the Caribbean through the Caribbean Basin Security Initiative, which over the past 10 years reflects an, um, an American investment of $617 million in our shared security in this region, designed to prevent illicit trafficking and improve citizen safety. And these are just the tip of the iceberg. Secretary of State Pompeo talked about this potential in his visit to Jamaica earlier this year, his first to the Caribbean, when he said, I believe that the United States and Caribbean nations can do much more together. We're natural allies and natural partners. Now is the time to move forward with even closer ties. There's so much opportunity. As our U.S. Caribbean 2020 strategy marches on, we gaze towards the horizon and recognize that our futures are intertwined. We will continue to build on our strong foundation of values and beliefs, and with your help, ensure the progress we have made carries forth well beyond 2020. With such active and dedicated participants, 
I am excited to see where the future leads and you should be as well. So once again, thank you to Dr. Nelson and to all of you who make this month of Caribbean American heritage a very special one. And thank you for listening. Thank you so very much. That was so moving. Uh, Deputy Assistant Secretary, Ms. Cynthia, may we call you Cindy? That's um, fine. <laughs> Kirsch, uh, we too are excited. The Caribbean region is special and thank you for your partnership. Mm -hmm. HR 4939 is a gift and we look forward to building on those bonds. Due to the coronavirus pandemic, the month long festivities in June will be all virtual and feature intergenerational dialogues, cultural celebrations, armchair conversations, panel discussions, town halls, workshops, ICS's Smart Caribbean Brain Fest, and a hackathon. Events also include a gospel concert, a youth survey for which I'm leading on Diplomacy Day, uh, film and video screen screenings, as well as opportunities to engage in a question and answer session with speakers, presenters, esteemed guests such as yourself, and elected officials. For more information about upcoming events, please visit www.icsdc.org or CaribbeanAmericanMonth.org. The Caribbean region is the United States' third border, and during the month of June, stakeholders across the U.S. are encouraged to promote and celebrate Caribbean Americans and their contributions throughout America in cities like Atlanta, Baltimore, Boston, Charleston, Chicago, Hampton Roads, Hartford, Houston, Los Angeles, New Orleans, New York. We have Queens and, and Brooklyn with strong Caribbean uh, clusters, Orlando, Philadelphia, Providence, Richmond, South Florida, Tallahassee, Tampa, Washington DC Metro, and Wilmington, just to name a few. I will now hand over to Ian for the introduction of our next esteemed guest. Ian? Thank you, thank you, Cherie. His Excellency Noel Anderson Lynch of Barbados holds dual accreditation, making him ambassador extraordinary and plenipotentiary to the government of the United States of America and ambassador permanent representative to the Organization of American States. In the latter, he presented credentials on November 28, 2018. Ambassador Lynch is a Barbadian statesman by background. He began his political career as a senator where he served from 1994 to 1999. He was elected to the House of Assembly for two consecutive terms, 2000 to 2008, and was also Minister of Tourism and International Transport, a marketing and communications professional, a former professional athlete, amazing things we discover, and most recently a lecturer at the University of the West Indies and CEO of the Barbados Cricket Association. Ambassador Lynch, it's my pleasure to introduce you, sir. Thank you very, very much and a good morning to you all. Uh, Mrs. Cynthia Kirsch, Deputy Assistant Secretary of State of the Bureau of Western um, Hemispheric Affairs. Uh, Dr. Claire Nelson, founder of the Institute of Caribbean Affairs. Mr. Andrew Blatter Clark, for your very inspiring <laughs> rendition of the U.S. Um, anthem, national anthem this morning. I also want to greet Mr. Nestor Mendez, the Assistant Secretary General of the OS, and congratulate him on just being reelected to that position. Ladies and gentlemen, many thanks for your kind invitation to join you this morning and to deliver myself of these remarks as chair of the Caribbean Caucus of Ambassadors here in Washington, DC. Caribbean American Heritage Month is an important part of the business calendar of, the Car of all CARICOM missions in the US and also an important part of the lives of all Caribbean envoys and Caribbean people resident in this country. From the outset, I wish to congratulate Dr. Nelson on her persistence in ensuring that this month of activities be celebrated, even in the face of extraordinary and unprecedented challenges, the likes of which none of us could have readily predicted. Under the theme or shared history 
or a shared future, ICS has captured the essence of a new paradigm for a renewed relationship between Caribbean people and their adopted homeland. Not just for those that have come to reside and to work here, but extending to third, second and third generation Caribbean people that were of course born here in the United States. Additionally, it is a fact that millions of citizens in the US are in some way connected to their Caribbean neighbors or Caribbean neighbors, sometimes in ways that we neither recognize or fully appreciate. This year's events are being held against a backdrop of unprecedented events that are taking their toll in a disproportionate way on the lives of black and brown people who make up a large percentage of the Caribbean American community. The ravages of the COVID-19 pandemic has affected these communities of color in this manner, simply because many of these folks are overrepresented in professions where they risk exposure and of a racial gap in wealth and income that has rendered them extremely vulnerable at this time. Concomitantly, the racial tensions that has now gripped America has exposed new challenges that have impacted our community and further challenged us to look out for and to work in the development interests of all Caribbean people and all people in the US. Let me say at this stage that our condolences go out as well to the family of Mr. George Floyd. The difficulties have also created challenges, but they have also thrown up a world of opportunities. And this is why it is so critical that these events continue even if they must be converted to these virtual platforms. This year, more than ever, is the time for all of us to first recognize that we have the best of examples to follow when we consider the outstanding contribution that so many of our Caribbean people have made to building this land. We are standing on the shoulders of giants. Our platform is strong. It is resilient. And that is why the intergenerational dialogue in this year takes on even new meaning. Next, we have a duty to put our best brains and skills to work to bring along all citizens in this nation. If there ever was a time for the brightest and the best in our communities to step forward and to work for the overall good of our people, that time is now. Smart, the Smart Caribbean Gathering, a future brain fest, the intellectual component of these celebrations brings this ideal to the fore in a practical and sensible way. As Dr. Nelson has also reminded us, this is also the year for those in the Caribbean community to show up and be counted in this presidential election year. We have the means and the wherewithal to make our presence felt in the social and economic sphere and through our influence at the polls is one avenue to do so. It is also encouraging to note that not just Caribbean people in the US are gathered to forge a new direction for Caribbean folks here, but that people of Caribbean descent the world over are gathering to improve our existence and that they have so willingly taken up the challenge to be a part of this critical exercise. What is needed is not just a platform for international solidarity, recognizing the challenges of our people, but rather an international coalition for action that allows us to gather our people wherever they are, to lift up our people socially and economically everywhere. No doubt this tangled dynamic will be played out throughout this month. We must be at the forefront of brokering for ourselves the change that we need for our people and our communities. That change will in turn lead to a change in this entire nation. Once again, many thanks to ICS and our best wishes for an enlightening and edifying month. Blessings to you, Dr. Nelson and your people. I'm obliged to you. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Ambassador Lynch, for those wonderful words, words that actually tell us where it's at and actually uh, looks uh, to the future. Thank you. And now, Assistant Secretary General of the Organization of American States, Ambassador Nestor Mendez, is a career diplomat who hails from Belize in Central America. Uh, Belize, of course, dual identity, Central American, Caribbean. He's a former ambassador of Belize to the United States and to the OAS, from whose secretariat he now serves the 34 member states. 
as was noted earlier, congratulations are in order because the OAS member states had just re-elected Ambassador Mendez by acclamation, it should be noted, to a second five-year term as deputy head of the world's oldest regional organization. A great pleasure to introduce a gentleman who is also, by the way, my boss, Assistant Secretary General Ambassador Nestor Mendez. Ambassador Mendez. Thank you very much, Ian. It's great to see you. And you know, I was looking when when we were all signing up, and um, Dr. Nelson was looking for you, and I kept thinking the traffic must be really bad out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you. Uh, I wish to start by acknowledging the presence of uh, Ms. Cynthia Kirsch, Deputy Assistant Secretary of the Bureau of Western Hemisphere Affairs. And special greetings to uh, Ambassador Noel Lynch, Ambassador of Barbados to the United States and to the OAS, and the coordinator of the CARICOM Caucus of Ambassadors. And of course, to my friend, I'm not going to say old friend, to my friend, Dr. Claire Nelson, whom I've had the pleasure of knowing for quite a bit of time now. It is truly a delight uh, to be able to join you in this event. I hope you and your families are doing well and that you're keeping safe. I bring greetings from the Secretary General of the OAS, His Excellency Luis Almagro, and the entire OAS family of nations. As you're all aware, the proclamation for the National Caribbean American Heritage Month in the United States was first issued on June the 1st, 2006 by President George W. Bush. This was a significant accomplishment as it solidified and gave full recognition by the United States of America and acknowledgement of Caribbean people's sterling contribution to the socio-economic, political, and cultural tapestry of this great nation. This year's theme, Our Shared History, Our Shared Future, is a reminder of the enduring legacy of Caribbean American fraternity. We look forward to the events, which will include the Smart Caribbean Gathering, a Futures Brain Fest, an ideas and innovation camp involving Caribbean American leaders and academics, joining together over virtual platforms to discuss issues affecting the Caribbean region and Caribbean Americans, particularly in light of the COVID-19 pandemic and post-recovery period. This year marks the first of all, the first when we're having all virtual series of events to celebrate the month. I am pleased to see that even in this uncertain time, we're able to celebrate this important month and to honor the illustrious history of Caribbean American pioneers and trailblazers. I also wish to recognize the work of the Institute of Caribbean Studies and their partners to successfully grow awareness of the commemoration of the month and highlight Caribbean immigrant relationships with the political and policy leadership in the United States. The COVID-19 pandemic has upended our lives and wrought unimaginable devastation upon the global political and economic framework. The Organization of American States, like all other multilateral bodies, is working tirelessly to create innovative programs that address the emerging challenges posed by the pandemic. I also wish to recall here that the English-speaking Caribbean alone, the CARICOM community, consists, comprises almost a third of our members, 14 countries, and we have 35 member states. The road to recovery will be arduous, but we must remain diligent and find opportunities within this challenging time. The indomitable spirit of the Caribbean people will prevail, of that I am very sure. History will show that despite the pandemic, the Caribbean people espoused a staunch determination to overcome and continue to proudly proclaim their heritage and contributions to the development of the United States and beyond. I wish you a very successful and fruitful celebration and please stay safe. Thank you very much. And thank you very much, Ambassador Mendez. Um, on the program, we have a, a musical interlude, but before we get to that, I wondered whether Dr. Nelson wanted to come back with her poem just now. Well, I would just sing and I would do it all at once um, after the musical interlude. Okay, so thank you. So we now 
bring up for this musical interlude, Michael Wilson, who actually is a vivid example of talking about Caribbean um, technical assistance to the United States. He's on the salubrious shores of Jamaica, from which shores he will present us with his musical interlude. So, Michael Wilson? Is, is Michael on? Uh, he was here. Let me see if I can see if he got lost in cyberspace. Um, yes. The challenge. Oh, he's here. Hi, here he is. There he is. We shall not be defeated by technology. So, Michael, <laughs> welcome back. Thank you, Michael. We defied COVID-19, so technology is nothing for us to defy. Yeah. You have it, Michael. You have the floor. We're not hearing you. Can you hear me?
Thank you, Michael. You were so infectious in spite of the, the issues with the bandwidth, but really we could see it and we heard the strains of one love. We are so grateful. Um, yes, 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 we are gathering. And as Ambassador said, we stand in the shoulders of giants. And this celebration of June as National Caribbean American Heritage Month comes amidst a time of great upheaval. But the last six weeks have reinforced to me that perhaps so many of us, we're at our best when our backs against the wall. This year at ICS, we have lost a few friends, some names who you might know, like Earl Graves, who was one of our first keynote speakers back in 1995. We've lost Roy Hasick, the former president and founder of the Caribbean American Chamber of Commerce and Industry in New York, who was a key partner in organizing, along with ha Hazra Ali and others, the first Caribbean American Heritage Month event in Brooklyn, New York. We've also lost Elizabeth Stanley, a former board member of IACS and a co-founder of the first Caribbean Political Action Committee Commission in Washington, DC. And of course, there are many names who we may not know, but we all will be missed by our loved ones. And so we pay homage this month to those at the front lines of our community, who are nurses or doctors or teachers or bus drivers and all of those, including those in our armed forces, security forces, the National Guard, the police, whose essential service has kept America moving in this time, this moment of the great transformation, the holy transformation, as I like to call it, and the great turning. What this moment in history is also teaching me is that the last 15 years of persisting in divine fate and fury and organizing as a volunteer coalition of the willing and the lives of the able has not been in vain. When I think about those who began some 15 years ago, um, you know, from Jenny Roscoe to Congresswoman Donna Christensen to Doreen Thompson, Charmaine Robinson, Muiza Montali, Finiana Joseph, Jamila Thompson, Marva Herman, Glenn Joseph, Anthony Carter, Hazra Ali, Hazel Rogers, Lorna Shelton, Beck, first event in Charleston from 2006. Every year, she has pulled up money to her pocket to make sure things happen. Uh, Marva Herman in California, and Valerie Sanders, who launched the first Captain American Heritage Month in Georgia. And of course, there's so many others who have joined since then, um, from Philadelphia, Miranda, Atlanta, continuing the tradition, Samantha, Andrew in Boston. I mean, there's so many, I hope I don't forget anybody because my head will be shut off. There's Jerry all the way in Nevada who's trying to get stuff done, started there. So it's really been a, 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 a plethora of people volunteering. And what makes this very emotional for me is that it's a band of volunteers. We have to thank our godmother, Congresswoman Barbara Lee, for really taking on board this vision and making it her own. And, and making sure that the resolution and the bill that was first tabled in 19, 2004 made it through two Congresses to finally being approved on February 14th of 2006. We have to also thank Senator Chuck Schumer in New York who put it through the Senate side and the rest, as they say, is history because on June 6, 2006, President George Bush signed the first proclamation. And so here we are in this gathering, online, in virtual world, in e-space, in cyberspace, lost in cyberspace, but we are gathering in this mass camp of movement, this carnival of change makers and joy merchants who have gathered to create a new song for the future of America. We are gathering to craft a new way forward. We are gathering to explore this landscape of COVID and accompanying crosses to clear new pathways for thrival. For we still, we still believe in the beauty of our American dream. We still believe in the change in shape that we too have the voice and the music to continue to breathe American democracy into the perfect union. For we have come, for centuries we have come since Charleston and the trade in slaves in Charleston and Barbados, we have come. More recently we come by banana boat to build a Harlem Renaissance. We 
come in iron birds to find solutions to hungry bang belly pygmies and lack of opportunity. We come to create Gavias images of a better life for people. We come to build roads of opportunity, paths of understanding, bridges over troubled water. We come arms outstretched, not as beggars, but as partners in a collective search of equality and justice for all. We come steeped in faith. We come from lands of steel bang, calypso, soca, reggae. We come from lands of light and laughter. We come and we toil in cold, dark places. Yes, even in Minneapolis. We come because we come to give hope to those we leave behind. And as we come and labor, we give birth to sons and daughters, warriors who transform, who change, who transmute like Belafonte, like Poitier, like Powell, like Farrakhan, like Malcolm X, like Shirley Chisholm, like Cicely Tyson, like, like so many, so many, so many from the field of sports to the field of music, to the arts, we come. To the field of science, we come. To the field of business, we come. We come as warriors. We come as survivors. We grow. We grow new roots and we spread our branches and we plant new seeds surviving through the strength of our culture. As we gather in this new space in post-COVID world, let us meet our minds to be together, to work together, to trust the chain from the grain, to clear the weed that strangles the seeds. Let us come together as we gather to build, to clear ground for a new construction, to create a new community, a new society. A smart society, a sustainable society, a society where meaningful metrics matter, a society where we are able to be agile and adaptable to the winds of change that every day seem to be blow fiercer as any hurricane. Let us meet our minds to be resilient, robustly resilient, that we can withstand these forces and grow back new roots. And let us also meet our minds together to use technology as we do today to transform to continue to build for thrival, for the inclusive prosperity of American society, of Caribbean society, of global society, following in the footsteps of the national pledges we learned as children, that we could grow to ensure that we in Jamaica, we in the Caribbean, take our place to endure the whole human race. So yes, let us come together to create a new community, a new society, to create a new life on this fertile ground called hope. Because we are gathering, we're gathering in faith, we're gathering in hope. This June, we are gathering to reimagine the future, our future, our American dream. Thank you. Thank you so very much for such an inspiring message, Dr. Nelson. You are a true leader. Caribbean Americans have long shaped culture and patriotism within contributions that bolster America's significant role in ensuring a strong vision and strategy for winning, for a winning future. Past and present historical records of, contribu of contributions of Caribbean Americans begin with Alexander Hamilton, one of the founding fathers and framers of the United States Constitution, Joseph Sandefort Atwell, the first black Episcopal priest in the Diocese of Virginia, along with you, Dr. Nelson, conveyor for the commemoration of June as National Caribbean American Heritage Month. Thank you so very much for leading the charge and countless others. At this time, I would like to say thank you to the President of the United States of America and the White House for issuing this year's proclamation designating June as National Caribbean American Heritage Month. And the United States Department of State, the Bureau of Western Hemisphere Affairs, for your unwavering support to the Caribbean region and in conjunction with ICS, the Institute of Caribbean Studies the Caribbean American diaspora of Antigua and Barbuda, Aruba, Bahamas, Barbados, Belize, Caracal, Dominica, Dominican Republic, Grenada, Guyana, Haiti, Jamaica, St. Lucia, St. Martin, St. Kitts and Nevis, 
St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Suriname, and Trinidad and Tobago, which makes up the beneficiary countries known as the Caribbean region. We also would be remiss if we did not mention that with all of the unrest currently happening across the country and the world, today's comm commemoration is a great example of unity and prosperity. And with policy like the United States Caribbean Strategic Engagement Act of 2016, HR 4939, which reflects a broad framework in diplomacy and a consistent engagement between Caribbean leaders and the US government, while forging a multilateral cooperation with the Caribbean di diaspora, perhaps legislators of today can author a similar bill, the George Floyd Act, perhaps, that calls for an increased engagement with communities of color and law enforcement. Thank you so very much to all of our guests, and I'll turn it over now to Ian. Ian? You have to unmute yourself. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sometimes trying to stay in step with the technology. Yes, so it is a distinct pleasure. Thank you, Sharif, for co-hosting. And uh, again, special thanks to Deputy Assistant Secretary for the Bureau of Western Hemisphere Affairs, Cynthia Kirsch, our keynote speaker. Thank you for those really wonderful words that uh, uh, brought out some things that some of us may not have known. I never knew of the connection with Ms. Biles and Belize, for instance. And of course, Ambassador Nestor Mendez, who is from Belize, he hails from Belize, and he uh, brought us greetings from the 34 member state organization of American states. And uh, Ambassador Noel Lynch, Ambassador of Barbados and Chair of the Caribbean Caucus for this time. Thanks to them all for taking time out of what we know has to be a very busy schedule to be with us at this launch. Ladies and gentlemen, as you know, there are lots of events planned, all online, beginning with the opening celebrations in Boston this evening. Indeed, despite the drama of this year, we will not give in to COVID, but rather in the true spirit of our Caribbean ancestors, many of whom came here and blazed the trail very bright. We will press ahead. With the launch now done and behind us, let's go forth and get as many people as we can, everyone in fact, to join in celebrating June 2020 all around the United States as National Caribbean American Heritage Month. Thank you and God bless you all. Thank you. <laughs> Bye everyone. One love. <laughs> One heart. Let's get together and feel alright. Thanks, everybody. One love, one heart. Give thanks and praise to the Lord, and we will feel alright. Let's get together and feel alright. Thanks everyone, have a fantastic day. Visit us on www.celebratejune.org to stay in touch and follow us on Facebook at our Facebook page and stay tuned for this evening at six o'clock. Thank you again. Bye, have a wonderful day. And thank you again, Dr. Nelson.